Well, hello everyone. Pilot Steve back with you. Today we're in the BL-3 on a flight from uh, Mobile, Alabama, back to Spruce Creek in Florida. And uh, the weather was kind of lousy, although uh, there were no thunderstorms around. It was just rain, continuous rain. Uh, leaving Mobile, I climbed up and uh, got above the weather and it was smooth sailing all the way to probably close to Gainesville. And uh, then as I started getting lower, I was getting into the clouds. And listened to the ATIS and decided I better do an RNAV approach because um, ceilings were reported ragged at 500. So uh, that's the easiest way to get in anyhow. Spruce Creek's hard to find from the air. A lot of times it's hard to see the runways. So if you're on an approach, you're going to be pointed right at something. But um, talking to Daytona Approach on an IFR flight plan, of course, and uh, requested the RNAV-6, and they gave me vectors to the RNAV-6 and wind up giving me the full approach, which is fine. Um, and you will be able to see the whole sequence here pretty much. Um, uh, I set it up on the GTN 750. And uh, as I moved along, uh, once I uh, captured in on course, let the autopilot fly the whole thing. So um, I'll sit back and narrate parts of it as things happen. And uh, you'll see here they had me down to 3,000 feet. The initial approach fix is at 1,900. So at some point they'll get me down to 2,000. And then Tell me to maintain 2,000 till established, cleared for the R and a half six approach, which is what I did. Uh, I did break out at about uh, 600 feet, five or 600 feet, and to be courteous, I switched back over to Daytona and told them cancel IFR. I've got the runway in sight. They appreciated that because when you're on an IFR approach like this, they're not going to let anybody else land or take off IFR. Uh, until you've told them you're down. They actually gave me a phone number to call in case I couldn't reach them in the air, which is pretty normal. And um, wasn't real bumpy or anything, so it was just an easy flight. Let the autopilot do all the work. Wanted to see how it worked anyhow, how it coupled up and how everything did. And it did perfect. I mean, uh, I disengaged at minimums, which was, I think, 420 feet which is about 400 feet AGL here. And um, it was an easy flight, easy landing. So I'm just going to sit back and uh, be quiet and let you see the rest of the flight. And if you have any questions about what was going on, just let me know. Sorry about my camera placement. Uh, I forgot my suction cup mount on this trip, so I was doing the best I could. And uh, I have more video of the entire trip, and I'll get that up here shortly. I want to get something up quickly for you. Um, I got up to 1, 3,000, 13,000, and I uh, got some great performance specs from that. And uh, I'm going to do a performance spec video very soon. I've got enough data now, and I've got all the logs from the Garmin system. And I'll get that up for you so you can see them. But basically at 13,000, I was doing uh, about 185 knots true on um, 7.6 gallons per hour. The Rotex has a little sweet spot where if, if you can nudge it up to about 85% power and keep that fuel burn below 8 gallons an hour, once you just barely nudge it past there, it'll go on up past 85% and 87, 89. And, it, it then it starts burning nine into the nines. I think there's a power saving mode there somewhere on the Rotex where if you're below a certain power setting, it's gonna save on fuel. Probably the turbos don't kick in as much or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out and find out and let you know. But uh, that's a sweet spot for me. 85% power uh, gives me. Oh, I don't know. At 9,000, I think I was doing about 170 knots indicated not indicate, I'm sorry, 170 knots true airspeed. And uh, and then, of course, up at 13,000, as you get higher, 
your true air speed gets higher. So like I said, it was about 185 knots. I had a nice tailwind at one point. I was doing 204 knots across the ground, which is nice. It was a nice short trip back and uh, turned into an enjoyable flight. And I'm really impressed with the VL3 as an instrument platform. I was worried about that to start with because after flying larger planes for a long time, they're very stable. They don't bounce around a lot, and I'm starting to find that out about the uh, VL3. It seems to be a very stable IFR platform. Nothing uh, unusual about it, and it uh, it'll hug that glide slope right on down. So, um, watch the rest of the video. Got the gear down at try to put it down on an approach at a thousand feet AGL. And uh, so you got to get slowed up because you're usually still on the way down. So, uh, but it, it had no problem. I just pulled the power all the way back, pushed the prop forward, and even down at five or 600 feet a minute on the glide slope, it still slowed down to gear speed with no problem. Put the gear down and just let her land. It was very easy. Enjoy. Uh, any comments that you have, anything else you need, just let me know. Pilot Steve, see you in the next video.